Hello everyone, and welcome to the RNG University on tonight's episode, Rakdos Midrange. So this whole week I've been trying to play two color decks, and what better two color deck to play than Rakdos? Uh, since last week, a lot of the tricolor decks that has black inserted did extremely well. And the reason, it's pretty obvious, black color is so strong in today's meta. So uh, I want to play a Rakdos deck that's a lot like Grixis, just without the blue counter spells. And I did have an inclusion that gave us additional card advantage in the later game. So let's look at the whole deck list. You might already see that inclusion. So in the early game, of course, I have a bunch of removal. So three cut downs, uh, three go for the throw, and three Shodra's Edict. Right? Basically, any kind of removal we want. If we you want you want to kill a creature, a small creature, we got cut down. You want to kill a big creature, we got go for the throw. If you want to kill a creature that's ward, or you know, if your opponent has rock priest and you don't want to target it, Shodra's Edict. And if your opponent has artifact, a braid. We also have two abrade, and then four Blood Tithe Harvester, just so that we have Blood Tithe Harvester. It's Rakdos, of course it's in the deck. And then four Bank Buster. Reckon Bank Buster is very important in this deck because that's the ultimate card draw card engine. Right? We don't have any much any anything much else in terms of card engine. We have to get Bank Buster off. And then we have in a three drop, four Graveyard Trespasser. I love Graveyard Trespasser. This card is so good against almost everything in the meta. It's Life Gain, it's uh, Graveyard Disruption. Uh, it's Ward, so it kind of goes against a lot of different styles of decks. So it's kind of an answer to almost any deck in the meta. And then we have Fable. We're playing red, so Fable, of course. Four of Fable, the Mirror Breaker, must have. And it combos very well with four Shieldred. If we can get Shieldred off and then Fable, then we're going to have the draw two, discard two, game us four life. It's crazy, right? Shieldred is also just a... Uh, by herself a stomper against a mono red deck because well what, what are they gonna do try to burn us while we're gaining two life for every draw this is crazy good and then of course for invoke despair we only have two colors so we should be able to get off invoke despair uh fairly consistently and then my tech or it's not really my tech but a tech that i found capricious hellraiser this car is insanely good that i didn't notice when it was uh, being spoiled so uh, this is from your Phyrexia, of course. Uh, this spell, or Phyrexia, all will be one. This spell costs three less to cast if uh, you have nine or more cards in your graveyard, which you might think is hard, but our whole deck is full of removal, so we're just gonna keep pitching them and you know removing our creatures or remove our opponent's creatures with our removal spells until Capricious Hellkai can be cheap if we need to cast him for cheap. Uh, he's flying, and then when he enters the battlefield, we get exile three cards at random from our graveyard. Choose a non-creature, non-land card. And then copy it, and I can play without its without paying its cost. So what do we have? All the removal. We got a bank buster, and then we also have invoke despair. All these are copyable. So that's really good, right? We can also copy Fable, which is technically not a creature, even though he brings a creature. So this card is uh, very good. I've seen a lot of decks trying to kind of synergize or experiment with him, and what I feel is that. Three, four off might be a little bit much because it's hard to get nine cards in your graveyard. I don't have one in the deck. I only have one Capricious Hellcat in the deck because I don't think you want to run this many, right? Three or four. A lot of decks, deck lists I've found run three or four. And I don't think you want to run that many. And also, I only have one. It's a mythic. I don't want to go craft another one. So, look, one. All right. So, yeah, I, I, I would not recommend crafting him. I don't know how good he is, but I have a room to spare in this deck and I want to try him out. So, here is our experiment. Now, the the land base is pretty standard, 24 lands, and the lands are 6 Swamps, 1 Takenuma, 1 Mountain, 1 Sokazin. Of course, you can see Invoke, so it's more black than it is red, and you can see all the spells we have are pretty black, except for the Hellkite, which is 3 red, right? So then we have all the dual color lands, 3 Black Cleave Cliff, because I don't have 4, so 3, uh, 4 Haunted Ridge, 4 Sephira Spring, 4 Tramway Station. So you can see there's a lot of lands, a lot of dual color lands. Of course, if you don't have them, you can always just run more swamps, uh, more mountains. It's a little bit harder to justify in this deck because we do need 4 swamps for Invoke. So you might want to have a lot more swamp than you have mountains, but there are some important cards that require mountains. So at the very least, you want to have these dual color lands. Like Tramway Station, that's pretty much free, right? And there are another um, red and black land that you can have. Uh, that is the 
the Blood Fell Cave, right? The one that comes into play, and you get to gain one life. So, you know, it's better than nothing. If you don't have Haunted Ridge or Sophia Spring, you can run this. A little bit slower, but this deck can work a bit slower. And you can also run Xander Lounge or Zeotaurus Proving Ground if you want. It's not that great, but you can always cycle it for a, for a car if you are kind of playing the top deck mode. So that's our Rakdos mid-range deck. I think it's pretty good. Uh, you know, questionable. I don't want to just say it's amazing. Uh, I want to try it out and see what happens. So, Rakdos mid-range. Oh, I, I am really trying not to play blue uh, with all the color uh, combos I've been playing. Celestia and Rakdos. Every color but blue. Blue is just so good and I I think I've been playing it too much. So I'm gonna, you know, think about other decks for a second here. I want those first, but we do have removal and we have two Fable, so I think that's good enough of a key. The only problem is we have a tramway station. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, I guess we're getting punished for the last game we played. Alright, he's playing Mirix. Do I even want to cut this down? Hi. Okay, well now now I feel dumb cutting it down. Love High Harvester. Sort of have a blocker. I was trying to cut it down, but since he pillared Murex, I thought he would have a protection. Annex. Alright, we get two blood tokens, but we're gonna get hit. I had to play it on my turn there, because I don't know if our opponent has a protection spell. So that was the main reason why I played it on my turn. Now I'm gonna play a Swamp, because I could Edict him. We're gonna sack his Crawling Chorus, if that's something I need to do. Slaughter, huh? Alright, well, I'm gonna have to make him sacrifice something. Creature or non-creature? Or a token or non-token? Well, first of all, I'll let it resolve. And then, I will let him sac. Sacrifice a non-token creature. It's gonna make it a token, but you know what? It's better than getting attacked. Not gonna block because the Blood Tide Harvester can cancel all the slaughter thing. But we are gonna have to take one. Two. Okay, great, now he has a Skrill of that I have to kill. Alright, this is hard. Uh, we got three Fable. We have no Field Clean. Maybe Brotherhood's War. Well, uh, Brotherhood's War. Is it Brotherhood's War? Brotherhood's End. Yeah. Maybe that card would have helped a lot more. Uh, I need to remove this. But then we Fable. And we have a 2-2. Two, two. Can block this board. What can we do? What can we do in the deck that can actually help? I don't think we have anything that can actually help. That's the problem. Hmm. That's interesting. I have to block there, but at least it's not indestructible. We're at 5. A braid. Let's pitch these two fables. It's a little too slow. Oh, we did get a cut down. So we can upgrade this. Let's see if he targets something. And then we will kill it in response. I, I know I was down talking the hive saying it's not that good, but obviously this game we lost to the hive. It's also because I don't have any uh, fuel wipes. I was thinking of whether or not to put in Gix command. But there's a lot of five drops in a deck that may not bode well against a lot of our other opponents. But of course, 
right now seems, seems to be better than Invoke Despair. So we're just gonna GG and quit because they won. Noctune. Good game. Yeah, uh, uh, for a black red deck, it's a lot harder for us to deal with enchantments. Until we can invoke, right? And the one going first, meaning that we have to be on the back foot instead of being on the front foot. Taking the initiative to invoke our point. Oh well. Obviously, the, we, we, we proved last time that the Celestia poison deck is being pushed by the algorithm. So, when we face against that, we don't stand a chance. It's kind of like playing against someone using God Mode. I think that the hint was telling me to bluff my opponent. Liaf. Hey, we're gonna go first, but this hand is horrendous. I guess we will keep... I don't know, I'm very scared, but you know what? We kind of have two removal. So I'm gonna keep for a hot minute. And now we're screwed. Come on, just play your Felden. Play your Felden. Chick! Alright, resolve. Resolve. Swiss Sphere? Well, gotta make him sack something. Sacrifice a non token creature. Not top deck the land, and I'll leave. Should we have Mulligan that hand? Honestly, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think that game would have won, uh, would have gone our way no matter what. Because against Mono Red, we really needed to be able to go first. Did we go first that game? I don't think so. Insectile Aberration. Ooh. That's a cool name. We're going second again, and uh, this time we have removal. So I'm gonna keep. Hmm. That's a strange color combo that I haven't seen in quite a while. Does that mean my goal for the throw is completely useless and my braid's gonna be awesome? Oh, Jeskai. Well, that changes the equation up. Not really. So I'm gonna hold up, go for the throw against Chess Guy, because if I play anything, I probably just get countered. All right? Do I want to play something into a counter spell? Or hold up, go for the throw? Yeah, I'll just hold it up. Well, I guess we're just playing a slow game. I can at least draw one card from it. Silver Scrooney for one. Wow, our opponent doesn't have cards. So I'm guessing this is the Mind Splice Apparatus Jeskai deck. I, whenever I see a Scrooney, I, I assume it's the Apparatus. That means I have to keep two open every turn. Scrooney for one again. No lands? No lands. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's the apparatus. So should I play the cliff? I don't think I want to play the cliff. Do I want... I can start invoking him for six, but that's kind of a waste, right? Let's play the harvester. I want to draw with the uh, bank buster because I'm greedy. Oh, he drew land number four. Probably has another apparatus in his hand. So I'm gonna draw a card. Graveyard Trespasser. Delicious. So I'll play the Trespasser. No, let's attack first. No. 
No Emperor. Play the Trespasser. Ward. Let's start exiling things. I don't think he has, you know, a, uh, like, Invoke or something, so... I'm gonna exile that first. And I hold up my Abrade. If you want to play my Sly Apparatus, that's fine. I will Abrade it. That's why I have an Abrade. That's why in the deck. Maybe I should have uh, created a treasure first. Oh well. Nighttime is the right time. I wonder if you're Emperor. He is at 8. I'm going to draw for this turn, so let me play my Tramway. And I'll enter. He's probably going to play the Apparatus again. There it is. He gets to have one counter on it. Which is still good. Don't get me wrong. Being able to reduce everything by one is already very good. But he is facing lethal next turn, so he has to do something on that. Oh, unfortunately, the only thing I have are go for the throat, so they're not going to be that useful. And uh, Invoke the Spare does not get to the Mind Splice. Maybe it'll give me an Abrade. I have two in the deck. Opponent has to do something. And his removal, I don't know how many instant removals he has. He has seven mana total. Well, six mana plus one reduction. Fable, that's okay. That's gonna get, go, go for the throat it. That's on the round. Okay, let us draw a card. Shieldred, oh, oh, that's gonna get Fable. Go for the throat. Letting that happen. Another shield. Wow. That was crew three. What does he have? What does he have? He can reduce two spells. Big score. Okay. You can still reduce one spell for a removal. He has removed a bank buster, right? And if he does, I'm gonna invoke him. Invoke does four damage anyway. March. That's fine. Despair is always good. Insectile Aberration. The deck isn't bad. Your mistake is playing Jeskai instead of Azorius. Red does nothing. Nothing. Don't be greedy and try to use Big Score. That does not work. I tried it. Alright, well, see? When I'm playing against Control, I really want to command my opponent. And I feel like I wanted to be on the other side. Even if, even if they're losing, I feel like they're about to win. That's... Basically how control decks work. Now we're playing against Sayoban and our opponent goes first. Again, we have two lands. I hate keeping two landers. This, this hand has no removal. It's kind of risky. It does have Blood High Harvester and a Bank Buster. Should I keep? No, no removal. There you go. Now we keep six. Uh, I'll put back the Harvester. I don't like to, but everything else is way more important. Tranquil Cove. Interesting. Let's start with a black cliff, black cliff cleave. I can cut something down now. Unless it's Thalia. Alright, are we playing into a counter spell? This game, I much rather play into a counter spell because all I have are lands. 
I gotta make something happen. And a blood token might help me, because uh, I can pitch it. I'm pretty sure the Fable is gonna get countered. Take the damage? Okay. So now the question is do I want to play Fable? Because I'm pretty sure it's just going to get countered. So instead, why don't I just play Blood High Harvester again? And I'll play a tap land because I don't think it has creatures. And if I want to remove the board, I can follow up with Fable. Draw a card. See, if he wants to remove the board, I can follow up with Fable. And I can play the Haunted Ridge. And I can then cycle the other two lands next turn. That's a cool looking sleeve. What is that? Oh, it's Jace. Never mind. It's lame. You're lame. Anyone who likes Jace is lame. He's like the most basic you can get, Planeswalker. Everyone knows about him. Everyone knows he's like super powerful. And that makes him less cool, you know? You gotta you got go for one of the niche hipster Planeswalkers. Sunside Reverie, uh, he gets just little minions. Do I want to cut down a minion? I can cut down on his turn, I guess, but he has three mana. I want to get my mana out. If you want to protect his little one ones, you can do that. Well, make your choice. Blue Eye Control. This deck is the bane of all of my other decks existence because I, I just wish I'm playing this deck instead. It's so strong. I don't know if your opponent knows what they're doing though. And it's not playing against like a mono red aggro or something. Alright, let's pitch these lands. Hopefully I don't draw two more lands. Okay, not two more lands at least. Okay, now the question is, he could make this appear my bank buster, which means I have to pay one, two, three. I don't have four mana. And I'm gonna put it out before I play the bank buster. It looks dumb, but I need to do it this way. Okay, so then I'll pass turn. Experimental Augury. That is, see, it's another Mind Splice deck. Mind Splice deck is so amazingly good, but it is hinged on you drawing Mind Splice. I have to say that. If you don't, the deck is just regular blue eye control, which is iffy. And, you know, especially against aggressive decks. I don't know if we can win this game, though. It seems like we are kind of petering out. And we really need a Bank Buster to pull his weight. Our opponent has five cards to our... Okay, our opponent has eight cards. Seven? I can't count. Oh, a braid's very good. A braid is very, very good. I don't think I have any haste creatures, so let's go for an attack first. Now he'll block. Whoa, he's blocking. He's wiping the board next turn. Got a lot of removal. Most of which are useless, but at least the blood token could be used. If he has a farewell, we're gonna pitch the blood token to get rid of the cut down and maybe even one go for the throw. Nothing interesting. Uh, do I want to pitch a go for the throw as well against that deck? I don't know what go for the throw is actually gonna hit. Well, I do know what's going to hit, but it's kind of pointless to hit one of those 1-1 one, one mites. Are those even artifact? If they're artifact, I can't even hit them. Okay, so... I guess what we're going to do is... What are we going to do? Go in for the attack? Copy it and go in for two treasure tokens? Copy Graveyard Trespasser. Mill another, uh, kill another one of these creatures. 
Mm. Maybe he has Wandering Emperor. If he has Wandering Emperor, do I want to use my Reflection? Probably not. I want to hold up Reflection, right? He wants to Emperor 2 2. We're going to let him. He's not going to Emperor 2 2, so we're going to play the Graveyard Trespasser. He is Ward. It's pretty good to be Ward. We have a lot of mana. So we can outpace the syncopate. And let's take out the scrutiny. Scrutiny is the scariest car if you want to cycle back. Hopefully it does. Union. Yikes. Look at that. All that damage we dealt was for nothing. Hey, you wanna proliferate my uh bankbuster here? <laughs> it doesn't give me a 1-1, you know? It's really, really important not that not to let that happen. Do it. Do it. Do it, give me another card. Ah, oh, you know fun. Our opponent's no fun. And if he wins, he does not deserve to win, because he's no fun. Another sunset. That only gives him 2-1 one once. I don't I don't get it. Well, I was hoping my bank bank buster would pull his weight, but instead he just Actually, if I copy the Bank Buster, does it come in and play with two plus ones? Alright, let's find out. Hey, guess what? Free card drop. Ah. I was happy about the free card draw, not so happy that the card draw is that. Agree, I guess? I don't know. Time to go to nighttime. He can double block here, but I don't even care. Yeah, that's probably the right block if he's gonna wipe the board. But see, this becomes not a creature. Can I play a land? I didn't play a land this turn, right? And this becomes not a creature, and this goes away. So. Mind splice. Resolves. And then go in. Haha! <laughs> gotcha! And then I have a bunch of nothing. Still gonna lose this game. Farewell. I guess GG. Look at all my board. All gone. That's a good top deck. To be fair, if I was going to have one card left, at least it's that. Alright, I need four mana for Tramway, so I guess there's those. I don't think a Shield Drip by herself is going to make or break against a deck like that. All of these removal are kind of pointless. Resolves. Not like I can protect them. Anything else? Scrutiny for three. Lots of card advantage. Pass the turn to draw a card. My land! Oh, cause it, cause I shouted my land to give me a land. I'm cool. I don't know why I'm playing this out. I do not stand a single chance. I don't stand a snowball chance in hell in this in this matchup. This is like the perfect counter against Rakdos. Because we don't do f damage fast enough, and all of our big spells are too swingy that it would just get countered. So, I guess the good thing is I haven't all seen the counter spell yet. Whether that's good or bad, I'm not really sure. Maybe he's just holding up all the counter spell against effective cards. There is an Invoke here now, but I'm going to attack first. Give me a Treasure Stone. Bank Buster. Tramway Station. Blood Tie Harvester. 
Blood Token. I'm too excited shouting these cards out. Our opponent has like 17 cards. Uh, you know what? Let's do it. Come on, a braid. I just need a braid. Oh my. Jeez. What? That was literally only one in the deck. Still got it. Maybe he has Syncopate. You know what, if he has Syncopate? Uh, what can I do? I can't pay for it. One, two, I cannot pay for it, huh? Can I? She'll just eat it. That's not gonna help. Alright, you know what, you got it. Oh, I can't even GG. Should have GG first. But I wanna play a good game. Uh, I, I don't think we would've won that game no matter how we played it. Uh, the deck is tech against exactly what we're bringing. Not that our opponent's attacking against us specifically. Ew. Wasted. You cannot win. Yeah, yeah, that's basically how I feel when I play against a deck that has Jace. Anyways, if you look at the deck list itself, we cannot fight a actual control deck because our big swingy spells here, these are too heavy. And these are removal spells against aggro decks. So our deck is very good against mid-range to aggro. It will stomp mid-range to aggro. And as you've seen, we pretty much have been stomping mid-range to aggro. Uh, unless our opponent goes first and overruns us. And uh, Shieldra is very good. Invokes very good. The whole deck is very good. Except when you face control. And that is the problem. Unfortunately, that's kind of how the rock, paper, scissors works. Right? Basically, uh, you know, mid-range decks and very sort of uh, removal heavy decks are very good against aggro. And then control is very good against removal heavy decks like this. And an aggro is very good against control. This is our rock, paper, scissor sort of uh, magic meta that has existed since the dawn of time. Except when they mess up the balance and they have these aggro decks that tax mid-range decks and removal decks. Like Thalia and the, uh, the, the, uh, the three drop that looks at a card. Uh, I forgot what it's called. Three drop white card. Anyways, right, there's a lot of cards in aggro that actually does eat up our time. So uh, it makes it a little bit harder for this deck to fight against those specific styles. And that is why aggro is running amok in today's meta. Now that being said though, as you saw, a braid is incredibly important against um, a, a, a control deck. A braid is amazing. And we never draw Capricious Hellraiser, unfortunately. I really want to see how it runs, but we didn't run it and we didn't draw it because we only run one off. So that was the problem, but then again, we didn't really have that many nine cards in graveyard situations. Invoke Despair is amazing. Uh, it's amazing in almost all scenario, except when your opponent's holding up a counter spell, right? And all these removals, fantastic. All these removals, we need them for basically any uh, any meta, any opponent that's not just uh, playing draw goal until they play their big slingy spell. Like our uh, mono blue or not mono blue, blue white components, uh, opponents are running with the apparatus. And that's why the Abrade is so important. Take out Apparatus, win game. And yeah, that's all I got for you today. I still think this deck is okay. If you want to run in the meta, uh, basically just can see whenever you see an opponent play blue-white and you won't waste your time. It will have a very strong sort of um, presence against almost every other opponent. And that's all I got for you today. Thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you guys next time.